when you have a separate machine room like this, they're going to have a three-phase feed to the elevator motor, whether it's a hydraulic pump for a hydraulic elevator or whether it's a traction elevator and it's a three-phase motor. But there's one big disconnect, usually fuse disconnect feed to this elevator. So I'm going to show that with a motor connection. I have videos to show you how to create that custom content or you can create something similar for your needs. So let's go down to my electrical fixtures. So these loads or endpoints are actually fixtures, whereas the panels and switchboards are electrical equipment. So what I have in here is a receptacle equipment connection and a motor connection. So I want this ER motor connection, drag it in. And you can see the symbol I have is a little motor symbol with a fuse disconnect. So we're going to say that's in here somewhere, and we can coordinate that eventually with the shop drawings. So what I do here is this is an equipment connection. It's just a symbol, but it has a power connector. So there's no 3D associated with this. This is just a symbol. I like to assign some voltage and load to this when I enter it, even if I have to change it later. I at least want to get it close. So I'm going to create a separate type for each motor connection because the type contains this, this information. It contains what classification it is, how many phases it is, its voltage, its load. So that has to be separate for each kind of piece of equipment. So load classification, I'm going to further classify this motor as an elevator. If you didn't have elevator in here, you can always add it. These are easily added. So elevator, and it's going to use the elevator demand factor. It's three phase and it is 208. Let's say that I found out from the manufacturer that this is a 55 amp, you know, accelerating load because elevators have not just a horsepower rating, but they typically have a running load amps and then an accelerating amps and things like that. So I'm going to base this off the accelerating worst case amps of 55 amps. Again, you get that from the elevator manufacturer. So if I don't know how many VA that is, I can insert a formula in here. So I can just type equals like a spreadsheet equals 55 amps times, well, 208 three phase is 208 times square root of three, which ends up being 120 volts times three or 360. So 360 is the magic number for 208 three phase. So 55 times 360 will give me the VA. It's almost 20,000 VA, 20 kilowatts. And then down here, the type mark came in from before as an EF1, but I'm going to call this ELEV-1 for elevator 1. And I can put a description for myself and call it the elevator. And then also I want to make sure my type is renamed properly. I'll rename this first one and from the future I need to duplicate it first and then rename it. So let's rename this one as elevator 1 also. That is just how it's going to show up in my list over here on the left. And then this is how it's going to show up when I tag it. So, okay. And then I can actually tag this. Go up here to tag by category. It has a leader, which I like. So then I can just hit that and it tags it there. And then I can take this and move it around where I want. Kind of like a room name. Elevator 1. And that has my special symbol that I've created a custom symbol called ER Electrical Fixture Type Tag. So it's tagging the type mark. And then also in the machine room is a convenience receptacle. So we're over here to duplex. Now I need to bring in my custom duplex. This is just out of the box because it doesn't have the ER in front of it. I have a whole folder of my custom content and I can bring it in from there. Normally I would have that in my template, but as I'm still working on my template, it's not there. So load family. And it puts you into their default folder for family. And I have ER duplex receptacle right there. And I'm going to be having a, EV charge station in here as well. So let's get, that's a bollard, which will be fine for this situation. Okay. And it up converts them from 2020 or 2022, whatever you made those in. So here we go. So now I can just get rid of this duplex receptacle and use my own. The only thing different here 
and I show again I can point you to where I make these I created these so I like my symbol this way with the circle against the wall so let's get that in here now what I'm noticing is I'm seeing the actual extrusion box behind here so let's go and see what's going on with the view settings of this power plan this was created originally from the out of the box Revit electrical template. Okay, so this whole power plan is set up as fine and we don't want that. We want it set up as coarse. So that's something that I had missed apparently back when I created this template. So I'll have to take a note of that and fix that in my template. So there we go. Now we don't see the extrusion box behind the symbol. I only want to see a symbol. Another thing that happens with elevators is the cab itself needs a circuit for, for the cab lighting. That they hook up so let's get another connection here now this is not a motor it's just an equipment connection so what i have over here another custom content is this thing called er equipment connection so drag that in i use this like a pallet and see it's similar but it's a different symbol so this is for the cab power i'll put that in and this time i'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one instead of renaming it so I'm going to duplicate this and just call it cab power. Now I'm not labeling ER1 or ER2 because I'm not so worried that these are, they're going to be the same cab power. Both, both will have the same kind of connection. And I can put two of these in, just has the same type. So load classification equipment, and it is going to be a single phase 120 volt connection. So this is right. I don't know the exact load, so I'll leave it bumped up around 1500 VA which is a very conservative number for that. And this is already set up to be on the equipment schedule. I don't want it there, so I'll erase that. Its description by default was heat, and we're just gonna call it cab, elevator cab power. These are a lot of these are just notes for us, for our team. If you have other electrical people working in this, it's very handy to leave some documentation. And we will just call it cab power. I don't really have a special marker for that. And we'll leave it fused. And then let's also tag this thing with a leader. And we'll call this cab power. And it kind of fits in our symbol. Now, this is a distribution panel. But we can also use it to connect other house loads like the receptacles. So let's start with here with our elevator number one way over here. So you click on it. And then we have the power button. So you hit the power button. And then it asks for which panel do you want to connect it to. Now I can just drop down and find my panel. Or I can say select panel. And then go physically find it. And click on it. And if it's on the same floor and it's easy to get to. This is an easy way to do it. So now I've connected to HDP. It assigns the circuit in the order that we've chosen. And we've already set that up in our template to be. One, three, five, seven. We're going to go down the left side of the panel board and then down the right side of the panel board. And that's all in my video about setting up your template. So the rating on this right now, we're going to say it's a 100 amp trip. And that can be changed later. Now the load name. It brings in the load classification by default. But this is the name that's going to show up in the panel schedule directory. that will say, what does that breaker serve? So I like to be a little more descriptive. So I would do something like elevator one so that the end user knows what that breaker does. It's a three-pole breaker, and we can say apply. We're still in the circuit. Now what we can do is we can add a home run arrow. Even though my one-line diagram will actually size this feeder, I'm not gonna size it on this plan here. So it shows this as an underground conduit, as you can see up here. In a previous video, I show how you can create dash underground conduits. I'm going to leave it as an underground conduit right now because we most likely will run this under the slab. But I'm going to move it a little bit so it's not in the wall. And I can even move my little circle. And then I can give it a home run tag, no leader. And I have this set up with a custom tag for panel, dash, and then my circuits. And some people use a slash, and there's all the different kinds of ways to do that. You can customize it however you like. And I have a video that shows you how to do that, which I'll put in the description below. And then I also want my cab power to go to that panel, so I can do the same thing. Power, it's only gonna list panels that are available at the voltage that this is, which is 120 or 208. And I only have one panel right now anyway. 
So HTP, it assigned it the next breaker in order. We already used 135, now we're in seven. This guy, not just equipment, we're gonna call it elevator one cab power, something descriptive. 20 amp breaker is good. So we apply that and the wire type is underground again. And let's arc that. And I'm going to put that arc up here and get that dot right there. Get the tag on this home run. And then let's do the receptacle. Power it up, same idea. And we're gonna call this receptacle elevator one or maybe machine room. Machine room PO2. And it's 20 amp, which is good. We're in commercial here. So arc it. That looks good. And tag the home run. As simple as that, those three things are circuited. Let's go look at the panel schedule so we can follow along. We need to create a panel schedule. Now what you can do is just click on this panel and up above it'll say create a panel schedule. The other thing you can do is go up to analyze and go to panel schedules and it'll give you a drop down of the ones you haven't made yet and you can say okay and it creates a panel schedule and that will end up over here in your project browser under panel schedules right there and it names it the same we named it and here we go and we have this set up to show Multipole breakers, it takes the dividing lines out of it, makes it one big cell, which is what I like. And it has the names that we typed in. You can see the circuit description was that load name. We have things set up properly so that it divides up the loads amongst all the phases properly. Shows our mains rating. Now we're going to need to change this schedule so that we don't have a main circuit breaker. But then down here, we have all of our load classifications nicely sorted. So we know the different kinds of loads and their demand factors. In this case, we're all at 100% so far. And then if we move this over a little bit, we can see the full panel. And it's a wide one. You can use the control key and scroll to shrink or enlarge the panel, just the view of it. And down here we can see here's our total connected amps and estimated demand. Since everything's 100%, it's all the same right now. Thank you.